First of all, we should know in all accounting or ERP systems, we have some stages. For example, we have input. Input means we will enter like a payment voucher, sale, sale invoice, quotation. That is input stage. System will process, so processing, and then will give you a report called output. So we have input processing output, and then we will have to store it, to save it. Right? These are the four bigger challenges that we are having nowadays. Because if you have 20 year data with you and you lost, so now you stand no more. Right? Which means your mind has erased and you have to start the work from scratch. Right? So this is data in input manipulation. Manipulation is to manipulate means change. You know, suppose if you are failing your graduation and you did your graduation five years before and you know your university is going to throw your actual papers after five years. After five years there will be no physical record. It will be only the master file in the server. Now you had the server and you open the file and you put yourself as pass. Right? There is no cross check now because paper of five years more they have to throw otherwise it will be a big mess for a university. So if you change this is called input manipulation you will pass forever. Which is obviously every university want to save their servers so it should not hack. Even recently, last 10 days before I was watching on news, that someone tried to hack the Pentagon system, right? The US headquarter. So it's, it's a big threat, you know, if you, I don't know. Who is giving CPU the artificial commands you know, that this word file you press to open is the, the system is receiving a lot of in, uh, request to open, which is you know worms they replicate each other. It's so this is one for worm, then it two, three, four, five. You know it's like that automatic generation. Then we have Trojan horses. These are the softwares that we voluntarily install on our, our uh, software, our computers. But it uh, it is very difficult. Like it is not compatible with others and uh, work as negative too. For example, some software when you will install in your laptop, you will feel the system will say this is not a trusted software. But you need it because you want to use it. It may be a window player or some, some other player which you want to watch a movie, but still it's contradicting with the Windows, you know, trust policy and other things. So it becomes a Trojan horse. Trojan horse means that sometime it will affect the main you know files of the windows so trojan OS is one example back door is that programmers keep a back door that for example if you forget how to enter by username password so he will come he will enter through a back door and he will reset your passwords right and third is the stealing of data that we discuss in every system, we have four basic function: input, processing, output, and storage. Here, he says system should be accurate, valid, safe, secure, and adaptable to the changes. Then we should have a setting of priorities when we are going to have a system development controls. Means we have to put control on system. That's why you know some offices there is physical access control. And environmental control is because system need to be cool. Uh, it should be in a proper uh, environment. So you should always take care of heating, lighting, and all that. Logical control is more into username and passwords. Logical means you you have username and password that you have to take care that uh, it's a difficult password and no one can guess it. Let's talk about online import control. There are two type of imports. One is online that we do website. One is offline. Offline is when in your office you are doing something that's not online. And uh, o o offline, this is offline. The online is when there is one central database. It's always uploaded. Whatever you do become the change part of the system. 
So online is how we put the online control is we don't give user a lot of uh, options to write by himself. Most of the online forms you will see, he will say, okay, choose this product, add to shopping cart, then you, it will give you name, user, the uh, you know credit card, expiry and all that. Submit it, your payment will be done. So the system does not give you anything to choose by your own. You have to follow the system. So pre-formatting is the first thing. That right? pre-formatting name, uh, the credit card number, expiry. That is the biggest control. So people should not enter wrong things in the wrong. For example, it's a mobile field and you are entering your name. So it's a wrong act. Pre-formatting will save you because system will give you a message. This is a numerical fee. So enter only numericals like 0, 5, 0, something like that. Then we can check uh, by editing. We can define limits. Limits means that up to 10,000 you can purchase. For above 10,000 you need another guy to give you authorization. This is limit check, say 100,000 as a sale. Now what I did is, I issue 100,000, it was delivered. When it comes to the money, you know, when the customer has to give the money to the company, I called him, look, give me 50,000, I will do something with your invoice. No one will call. So what he will do is, he will open the same in sale invoice and he will re-adjust to up to 50,000, right? Means he enter a voucher and he edit it after some period of time. Company is so big, people are so much, who cares, you know this, if you have 100,000 invoices in a month, who cares for this, right? But system can care of this one. Now when this computer edit softwares we will use, they will put in the system that first show me the modified vouchers. Right? So by username, he will tell me which vouchers are modified and which fields were being modified. Who tried to delete the voucher? Who tried to duplicate the voucher? You know? How who tries to? This is a system audit. A lot of people are being screwed because of this software. I saw myself like a couple of times you need to fire people because they did like that. They changed the keep changing, you know. so mostly cashiers, you know. what they do is, they put one expense, later they open, they increase it again, cash will reduce, you know, this is how they keep cash with them. So a lot of techniques, but system will give you an option, who delete, who enter, which time, and you know most of the fraudulent activity, they happen after the office hours. So categorically you can check from 7 to 10 o'clock who tried to put the vouchers, what were the nature of the vouchers. Even some frauds are by management. Management what they does, before the year close, they want to increase the turnover, increase degree, offsite, online. In case, if something happened to our system, what is our contingency plan? Contingency means situational. Contingent is a situational plan. Means if someone hacks the Apple website, so how much time they will take to recover this? Today they have to think before it is happened. This is called contingency planning. And it's related to the disaster recovery. Disaster recovery is when some disaster will happen to your system and how you will recover from that. And you will try to maintain the business continuity. It means the business will keep continued in the future. Okay, so we have three type of option. One is the hot site. Hot site means a very good site. If some someone had Microsoft website, they have all software, hardwares, and they can recover the website in seconds. This is hot site. Cold site means that you have a setup, you have people, but you don't have hardware with you. So till the supplier will give you the hardware, suppose if something happened to your hard drive, so lead time to recover is dependent on vendor. It will be one day or two day. This is depends upon the supplier. And cold side means that if something something happened to your website, you will take months to recover from it. 
because you don't have hardware, you don't have infrastructure, you don't have 